Ruchem Abba Mishem Hashem Mishem Irgin Shir Tay. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's Shir from Harav Yaakov Zev Smith on Pirurim Lor Halacha Crumbs and Halacha. As you will get the character of Bishai Mermuth, the for sponsoring today's Shir with Nishmas, Bishai Ben Rav Eber Zetzal, and Lili Nishmas the Shlach Kodesh of Bishai Ben Rav Ben Rav Rom Zetzal. Very good yard side. Shmosik Tzur B'Sarachayim. Rav Smith. We always wonder the. You know, there's a con- concept that stepping on crumbs is kashal aniyas. Does that mean any crumbs? And especially before Pesach, we have to consider that Pesach comes and there's so many crumbs on the floor. Is that really a problem when there's crumbs and you step on crumbs? Is it kashal aniyas? We had a question uh, throughout the year about benching. When you bench, you have to have bread on the table. And it's not practical to keep bread on the table sometimes, especially at work. Is it good enough crumbs? And then I realized there's a whole sugya really about crumbs. Besides, of course, in Yonah Diyayim, it's almost Pesach, cleaning crumbs, crumbs in Svarim. But as we'll see, it's really throughout our Chaim, and even touched upon Yeridea, the basic status of crumbs and halach. And let me explain. The truth is, we know there's a severity of wasting, Baal Tashchich, and Allah to waste something. There's an Issa of Ibar Oichlin. There's also an Issa of Bezoyin Oichl. Especially when it comes to bread, bread is more chash than other food. You learn the Gemara in Brachas, Afnon, it's in Shachanar, Kufayin Aleph, a whole bunch of halachas, how to treat bread properly. So now the question that we have to clarify is, is that only by bread, when something became breadcrumbs, after a meal you have breadcrumbs, does it have the same halachic status like bread, and therefore, you can't step on it, you can't waste it. It would be good for benching. You don't need bread. Bread comes is enough. Or maybe bread is bread. Bread crumbs is, is the remainder. It's the leftover. Who said that it has the same chshivas as bread? So it sounds like a, you know, an abstract question, but as we'll see, there's at least three Gemaras that discuss bread crumbs and gives, gives us a very clear insight in what's the luck about bread crumbs. The Gemara in Psachim Davav Mad Beis, Yana Diyayim, obviously. The Gemara is saying, even though a person checked for Chomets, Habay Dik Tzarech Shiyavatel. Even though you made a, a Bedika, you still have to make a Bittel. Fregdim are my time, or why? You credit checked. E name a Mishum Perurim, if you're worried that maybe you didn't find every last crumb and that's why you have to be Mavatel it. Ha loy Chashidi. Zog the Gemara, cross the board. Crumbs? They don't count. They're not on the map. It's so much not on the map that you don't even have to make a, 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 a bittel. Now this is the concept, and we'll soon see the Magan Avram, Chayodam, and Mishnah Chavetz Chaim. Rephrase that Gemara, and they say, Peru Memeil of Bakli. You don't have to make a bittel on crumbs, because the crumbs are Mavutl Vahimid, because they're only crumbs. Now I know this is the wrong time to say that crumbs don't count. The Noshim have been cleaning since Hanukkah, <laughs> the microscopic crumbs, and now the Mara says crumbs don't count. But as I state the what could I do? But there's even a, another source, and that's the sugi in Brachas Num Beis and Beis, where basically the Mara says, Om Rabbi Yochanan, Perurim She'ein Bem Kazayis Mutal Abdam Biyad. We do know you're not allowed to destroy Eichel. That's an Issa of, besides Bezoyin Eichel, but a Baltashchis. But crumbs, less than a Kezayis, you're allowed to destroy. We'll soon see them in the context. You're washing my Mechayinim over the crumbs. So there's no problem of Ibud Eichlin. Why? Again, because crumbs don't count. Now, Toysis is quick to point out, which makes it a little complicated. Even though you're allowed to pour water onto crumbs, but don't forget, it's Kashal Aniyas. And Tais refers to two Gemaras, the Chul and Kofi Amad Beis, in Psachim Kofi Aleph Amad Beis, that stepping on crumbs is Kashal Aniyas. This is a Machab and Shachanar, we'll soon see. So now the question is, why Taka are you allowed to destroy crumbs? And if we say crumbs don't count, so why is it Kashal Aniyas? But to make a more Gishmak Kasha, who says you're allowed to destroy crumbs? Why is Rabbi Yechiran? Rabbi Yechanan in Shas is the one that says, Chatsi she asem and atayra. So that Chreinim asks, if you say you can't destroy bread, so why is it crumbs us al chatsi shir? So Rabbi said, the aside for today is the following. 
The truth is, there's an Issa of Ibar Eichlin and Bezayin Eichel. But it has to be an Eichel. It has to have the status of an Eichel. Something, crumbs that are the remainder after eating, and typically we don't collect the crumbs to eat. Zokta Levush in Kuf Pei Sif Gimel. Mutala Abed Purim She'emem Kazayis. Bibnei She'enem Eichlin. Bibnei Miyutan. Ve'en kan Bezayin Eichlin. Now this is not just a play on words. It, in order to be Asa Alt Bezoyen or Iber Eichel, it has to be an Eichel. And the Gemara is uh, telling us that crumbs don't have a Shem Eichel. Ah, I understand, very simple. It can't be a Chatsi Shir. Chatsi Shir is you destroy a half a, pi a, half a piece of, of, of food. If it's not Eichel, it's not Bezoyen Eichel. But whatever the case is, some crumbs, because they're, they're the leftovers of bread, don't have a Shem bread. The stipler, B'Ksav Yad Kachit, there's a, there's a uh, letter that he wrote in, in printed May Adam Uzman Chayel Ches, the end of page Tezayin. He also discusses bread crumbs, and he says, Lafia Sha'ara, if you're not going to eat it, it's not Oymid Lachila, it doesn't have a Shem Oichel. And God is, is a big, uh, has a beautiful raya. Even regarding truma, there's an issa of being ma'abed truma. If it's not oimbed lachila, it's not considered an oichel. So lemaisa we see that breadcrumbs don't have a shem oichel. Oh. But obviously, we can understand the next halacha. Let's say a person decides he wants to eat just one breadcrumb. And he wants to eat a l'shem achila. Does he have to make a bracha? Avada. Well, soon see the brachas are mighty. Ay, breadcrumbs don't count. That's only because it's not a melachila. If you want to eat it, ask us to hate. But you have to make a brach even on a kol shu. It's more than an ach Pshad is since he's intending to eat it, it never lost a shem oichel. Now, the maisa, even though we're going to be make a talk about breadcrumbs regarding ibar oichel, I must mention, the chinuch is a, really a fascinating chinuch and tough kuf chavtes on the Isabel Tashchis. He says, the aside of the Isabel Tashchis is to train ourselves to appreciate the goodness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And he says, he says, Hasid of Anshay Maisa was so careful, even a garga shall chardal, even on a mustard seed, one solitary mustard seed, not to waste it. He says, only Rishoyim don't care about wasting food. So I saw Grada, the Minchas Allah, and the Chuv and Chelek Dalet, Simon Samachal, he's talking about a new minig in his times to start planting nice flowers in the base of Kvaris. He says, it's Baal Tashchus. And he says, look at what the Chinuch is teaching us. A gargush al Khardal is much less than a Shavah Pruta. It's not even an Eichel. It's a preparation to make mustard. And you don't waste. So we come this, you start planting uh, usable flowers in a base of Kvaris, that becomes Asabah, no? The point only is, if today we're mekel, it's only because Allah is mutter. But a person that has the right Torah perspective, the chassid man shemaisa, don't waste anything. Well, soon titaka, people are makbit to collect the crumbs and eat it. Why waste crumbs if you could use it? <clears throat> but the point only is, and I saw the Oyach Meishorim, it goes back 150 years ago, in Perik Chavtes, he says even more. Because even the Gabi, the real is of Bal Tashchis, of cutting on a fruit tree, if it's no longer giving Paris and you need the space and it's not worth the money, you'll have to cut it down. Now, grab the people I'm mocked with cutting down a tree, I'm not going to get into that now. But even Baltashchis Gufa, if it's not worth much, he says crumbs, sometimes a person will worry about the crumbs, it makes them nervous. So, Lemaisa, there is no problem of Ibud of crumbs. Now, but if you use it, it's an Eichel. I'll give you a marshal. You know, it's like chicken bones after you finish eating. That's a chara mukta. But if you want to use it, you want to feed it to your dogs, it's not mukta. And raise a pella. The third source in Chazal and Gemara that speaks about crumbs is a Mishnah in Shabbos Kuf Mem Gimel and Kapaskin in Shechon Aruch Shin Ches Siv Chav Zayin. And the Machaba, which is really a Mishnah, says the following bones, shells, and crumbs that don't have a kazayas, there's no problem of muktza because you could feed it to your animals. It's a plea. Look at the mechutonim of crumbs. Crumbs is together with bones and eggshells. 
Vais to chais, but that's the Metzias. They didn't eat crumbs. If it was, so therefore the only head to why it's not mukta is, it's royal the klavim. So that's why the analogy that I said, comparing crumbs to bones is really a Mishnah. Because bones, shells, and breadcrumbs are not mukta because it's royal the klavim. Now we'll soon see, because man is there, we don't have dogs. Maybe breadcrumbs are mukta, we'll get the act that soon. But Lamaisa, to return to our original question, so what is the status of breadcrumbs? Basically, it depends on your hasiachsa to it. Breadcrumbs that remain after eating and you're not going to eat it, then Oymud Lachila doesn't have a Shem Oichel. But it's enough of the Rabbani Shalom's creation, don't step on it. Because bazillion of crumbs, of breadcrumbs, is Aniyas. But Allah is Mutta. And we did see a Gemara in Brachis Nun Beis regarding Ibad Oichel, Psachim Vav regarding Bitl Chametz, and Shabbos Kufman Gimbal regarding Muktzah. So now let's apply this Lamaisa, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Because you see, everything stems with this definition. First of all, let's start with the Shaila. Someone's on a very strict diet, and he takes for snack a breadcrumb, a pure breadcrumb, a What bracha do you make? So this is a Machaban Shechon Arkuf, Samachesif Yud. You make Hamoitzi. Why? The answer is why not? It's bread. If you decide you don't want to eat it and you throw it out, it's not an Aveira. But if you want to eat it, you, you, you sort of achshivay its status as bread and avada moitzi lechem in haaretz. Someone asked me a very amusing question. Uh, what bracha do I make on the, 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 the chopped liver on Sunday night? I said, and what about Tuesday night? So he chuckled. He said, well, see, in my house, the chopped liver left over from Shabbos, there's always breadcrumbs in it because people take the challah and they dip it into the bread, into the chopped liver. So he says, maybe you may have to make a moitzi because the breadcrumbs in the chopped liver. I said, okay, good. The mice of breadcrumbs is a moitzi. But this, you're not eating yeah. avada. Besides, you're not, you know, no kavanas achila. This is like a te'ima. And I, the mice of hamoitzi is never bottle. That's only if you're mechavan to eat it. If it's there just to hold uh, the, the, the gefilter fish together, the flowers that hold the gefilter fish together, we don't make a, we don't make a mezoinus. If it's not kavanas achil, if it's a tafel gomor, then it's bottle. Varaya, if you have a very salty fish together with bread, the Mish says you don't make a bracha on the bread. So this is not a kavanas achil, it's not even a tafel, it's just there, it's in your way. So you eat shop liver Sunday night, make a shakal, and ask his to hate. <coughs> a, a interesting question, a gay Ahoya and Befrat Pesach, is when you find, after you bench, you find some breadcrumbs or matzah is really hard to get rid of and after you bench you have, ma you have, you have matzah crumbs or breadcrumbs in your mouth the shaila is you have to make a new amaytzi or do you have to swallow it out? Swall you have to spit it out so the MS is that you'll say what do you mean I made a, I made a maitzi before but then again you benched and once you benched benching is a siluk and even if you have das to eat after benching you have to make a new bracha and what's my raya? we bench with a kais shel bracha we have das to drink the kaisal bracha. We made a gofen by Kiddush, but yet you make a new, a new gofen on the kaisal of Birchas HaMazen. Because Birchas HaMazen is a siluk. The salak all brachas, you have to make a new bracha. So Lamaisa, there is a tzad to say, if you swallow a breadcrumb after benching, you have to make another bracha. But the pais can say for numerous reasons it's not the case. First of all, you're not machav on the Shem Achila. It's just, it's easier to swallow than to spit it out. And you don't want to cause someone distress and start spitting it out. Also, the partially decomposed breadcrumb in your mouth is already not so much of an oichel. I saw Rabbi Nisan Karel, it's in, in, in Brachis Amid Reish, Reish, Reish Nun, Nun Gimel. He says that there's only Xeris HaKos of a Bosa Bein HaShinayim is still Bosa. But crumbs in the mouth doesn't have a din of, of an oichel. And then I saw the Arletzia and I saw others all say the same svara, geshmak uh, svara. If the food is in your mouth the whole time, it's not, then it's not even a silik. The Berachamah is not a silik. If you're holding the kais, oh, but it's not in your mouth. But the bread comes, you made a bracha on and stayed in your mouth the whole time, the bracha rishayna is still in effect. Rabbi Chaim Kanyevsky has a, a short shuv in the Bezaisa bracha, it's page 191. And he says a, a different kinech, that breadcrumbs are not chashuv. And he says, therefore, and listen to his chap, even if you change location and you go to a second place, 
So the previous svara that the bracha rishayin is still good doesn't work. Why? We have shinim akim. But like his svara, breadcrumbs like chashivi, like we said, and doesn't need a new bracha. Now the ma'isa, the next question is: You see how Chazal was so focused that everything has to stim. There's a minig Yisrael that has become a little embellished, I should say. But the minig stam some gemara brachis and a shulchan aruch in the end of simon kuf ayin aleph. They used to throw out a chaser, not pekluch. They used to throw chitim, kernels of wheat, and that's was their minig. Some threw kloyis vegoizim. But interesting, the Mechaba at the end of Kuf Aynala says, if you do that, fine. But make sure you only throw the kernels of wheat in a makam naki and clean it up afterwards. Because if not, you're going to be ma'abed oichel and you're even the isra of ibed oichel. So, sounds right. The kasha is, and all the achreinim ask this, what do you mean, ibed oichel? The kernels of wheat themselves are less than a kazayis. So just like the Mara says, in Mesech the Brachis, less than a Kazayis, you'll add even Abed Biyad. So, why can we say the same regarding the Chitim, the kernels of wheat? So, the MS is, when he is died to the Kasha, not a Kasha. Because it's not a Xeris Akasav, less than a Kazayis doesn't count. Because then you'll say raisins and peanuts and, and candies and anything small is not, there's no Ibn Aichel, Chas Vashal. It's only the remainder of a suda, breadcrumbs after the meal, it, lo- it got demoted, it lost its chashivas. But if something meikara is chashiv less than a kezayis, it's not automatically bottled, you let him babit it. Now, I saw the, the, the say for Nefesh Chaya, it appears on our Chayim, Simon Kufpei, he says, my svara plus. He says, a kernel of chita is a barrier, and barrier is chashiv. But you don't have to come on to that. It's not a pshat, less than exayis doesn't count. It's, if you have a piece of bread that's very chosh of a food and you have leftover crumbs, it's not oim bad lachila and therefore it's bottle. Like the stipler says, it's not oim bad lachila. But a candy, something that, that's of value, is not automatically bottle. But then I saw another yesoid and has a big impact on the rest of the sugya. And that is the Birka Yosef and our Sim and Kuf Pei, Siv Gimel, he says, there are many paiskin that hold. You only make it by a breadcrumb, or two or three. But if you have a number of breadcrumbs that add up to kezayis, then it's an isra of ibed oichel. He says others are makel, but he quotes some gedoyle Yisrael, you can't be makel. Now, in vos pashteit the So the Birka Yosef says, breadcrumbs are, very, are really important, just it's so small. Once you have a kezayis, how can you be ma'abedit? The makilim hold, Every breadcrumb is a zero. You don't add up zeros, or you add up zeros to nothing. Lamaisa the Shari Chuvas he've cut in Gimel, the Mogan Giboyim, and the Mishtabrus he've cut in Yud. Quote the Machmirim. I did see the Astor and Kuvpei quotes Taka the those that are Mekel. But Oibazoi, we can understand that taking a handful of chitim and throwing it at the chasin, even if you want to say, which is not true, that on one chitim there's no problem, but a handful typically is kezayis, and therefore it would be us. Someone asked me, it was Mola Yer I had enough from it. He typically in the morning by a lachayim, by a tikkun, he makes a mazayinus on cake, and then he wants to make a shakal on the schnapps. The problem is, it's very hard to make sure that there's no cake crumbs in his mouth because he has to get dry cake and he was aware of the Gemara and Baruch Hasnun Aleph Yemale Piti Secha that you have to make a bracha and your mouth has to be empty and his mouth is not empty <coughs> so the question is how do you deal with that point so the MS is that we could say on a simple level Perur Mamela Batling like we said maybe it doesn't count I mean, the truth is, in your mouth is never really empty. I mean, there's always saliva. There's no luck you have to get a uh, blow dry and dry, you know, dry your mouth. Now, what is a problem is when people and the women, they, 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 they take off the ring for washing and they, they don't want to put it down and make a loss, so they keep it in their mouth. So the, the whole bracha, they're juggling a ring in their mouth, that's really a problem. The words are not legible even, or, you know. But anyhow, that's a problem. But the breadcrumbs, nishkeferluch. But I must say, there's a mini contributed to the Shinova, who, for that reason, he made a shaka on the schnapps first, and then a mazayinus on the cake. Crowded the debatzina rov with chayin and ches to shaga meir and ches peizayin. Have another cheshbin that really schnapps is is more surveya. A whole bunch of reasons.
But halacha kaponim is someone follows the regular seder, mezoinus and shakal. So try to swallow as much as you can. And if there's breadcrumbs, we'll assume peru me labatli. The next question is the gay on a daily basis. And that is an halach in kuf pei si beis, based on a Sanhedrin tzaddik beis. With Machaba quotes to Gemara, it's the same Gemara, Lashem Gemara, but it's a very powerful Lashem. Call me she'enim mishaye pas al shulchanai, enay raya simen bracha la oila. I don't want to touch that, but that means if you don't leave bread on the table for benching, you'll never see bracha forever. In other words, like say in America, forget about it. <laughs> now, forever, you know, it's not going to happen. Not in your lifetime. Now, so that's takawai minig Yisrael, we, we make sure there's bread on the table. But the question on a practical level is, let's say a person's at work and he takes his sandwich and he's about to bench. So every day he has an issue. I leave a piece of bread for benching, I'm not going to eat it after benching because I'm going to throw it out. So either I'm going to not have bread on the table for benching, or if I leave a piece of the bagel or my sandwich, I'm going to throw it out. So that's baltashchis. So which is the lesser of two evils? Like what should I do? So the question is, maybe there's a third option. And that is, inevitably, when a person eats bread, any type of bread, there's some crumbs. Maybe you'll rely that the crumbs that you leave over, that tak is good enough for benching for the simen bracha. And we also learn throwing out bread crumbs is no issa. So you get tons of Allah chasanis. So the question, a very simple question, if you want to be Mekayim, the dinah Gemara, is it enough to have bread crumbs? Or maybe we'll say, who are you fooling? If you're allowed to throw it out, that means it's not chashiv. So why is it chashiv for benching? You can't, you have to be consistent. So the emphasis is that this is totally in the two reasons why Bechlal you have to have bread on the table. From the Gemara quoting a Pasuk in Eoi Vizmashma, that if there's nothing on the table when you bench, there's nothing to be chal on the bracha. The Paiskim quote the Lashon of the Zoya, that a bracha is not shayra on a dovereik. The Torah's Chaim, Kadmon, in Sanhedrin on that Gemara, he says, whatever's mutsumtsum and nothing remains is not a simon bracha. He brings a rai from the Isha Shunamis, from Elisha, and from Rus. But whatever the case is, the objective to have bread on the table is if you want benching to be the bracha that it's supposed to be, you have to have something should be chalon. But Reiz Apella, Rashi on that Gemara, and the Lavush and Mishtabur and Awa Simon quote the Rashi, that the real reason is. If you're benching, it's nice. And what's going to be if after benching, there's a knock on the door and Ani comes and he asks what to eat? And you have nothing to give him? A Yid that's living like that, a Trach Nishfunyenim, he's not worrying about an Ani coming, he's Ein Oiroya Simen Brachal Oilam. It's a marvel of insight how a person has to think of Yenim. A person's eating and benching, but a Trach Nishfunyenim, Ein Oiroya Simen Brachal Oilam. A Yid that's Lach is. But the Maisa, we have two reasons to leave bread on the table. So here I saw Mardik Einfa. Someone, the Sharetzian, in our Simon Sif Cotton Gimel says that really, for the reason of Simon Bracha, it's enough crumbs. Because there's some, it's not empty, it's not finished, it's, it's, it's chal. But if the reason is to give an honor, you can't be Mechabar an honor with crumbs. So already the Sharetzian had our Shaila, Kalachayad, and he says only satisfies one reason. So we don't want to satisfy only one reason. We, we were afraid of the other reason. No. But then I saw the Oznid Bru and Chelik Yudal of Simon Memvov, and Rabbi Yashiv and Ashri or Islam, but Al Chafei has the same Einfo. He, he was Mamish to ask, someone's at work, same am I Shaila, and she leave over bread, Baltashchis. Uh, so he says, at a workplace, there might be collectors which typically happened. But no one asks for bread. So in that situation, there's no, there's no chashash of giving bread. So the only reason remains is al simen bracha, and therefore bread comes enough with chula alma. The, the, the Rabbi Yashav and Ashri Yish adds, if it's mamish, like bread comes that are almost invisible, like powder, maybe it's bottle. But the shame kite is that our Shaila is telling you two reasons, and in a workplace, then maybe only have to have the reason of simen bracha. So, I, and I learned this again. I recall someone told me this maybe 30 plus years ago, but he made a roshim. He's once in Rabbi Moshe Wolfson's office in the yeshiva. I noticed he had a piece of matzah on the table. And I wasn't before Pesach, after Pesach. He said, Abdena Rabbeinu, what's that? 
So Rav Wilson said, no, it's not Kabbalah, very simple. Every day he eats lunch in the yeshiva, and he's off any benches. And he had the shayla, what should I do about that? I want to have a simon bracha. So to leave a piece of bread every day is baltashchis. So he had an idea, practical. He brought a piece of matzah, matzah stays the whole year, has good shelf life, put it on the table and puts it back in his drawer. Now, you want to be really safe, you could bring shmur matzah, so you could even keep it over Pesach. <laughs> but no doubt about it, that's a practical eitzah. Rab Chaim Kanyevsky, I saw a tshuva quote in the River Sefraim, Aleph Kofal Amin Hey, he doesn't understand the whole problem. Because if Allah is supposed to leave a piece of bread for benching, so if it ends up being thrown out because there's no other choice, it's not baltashchis, it's keeping the mitzvah, okay? But if you use matzah, maybe that's a better idea. Now I wonder, I'm in a yeshiva and a camp, so I have this question, is there a reason to keep a, talk a piece of bread as opposed to crumbs? Because I can't be mechaber on it's not mine either yeshivas or the camps. So talk, it makes sense. It's telling you two reasons. If the reason is bracha, I want a bracha. If the reason is ani, then l'chaira, avada, we don't have to worry about the ani if it's not mine to give, and then breadcrumbs is enough. The big question, which really our sugya, is how to deal with the remaining breadcrumbs. So here we have two issues. Number one, ibar eichlun, bal tashchis. And number two, stepping on crumbs, which the Gemara says, in two places, kashal anius. So the question which we began with is, does breadcrumbs have the status of bread? So again, to repeat the Gemara, Perum she'emem kezayis mutala abdam biyad. That's number one, you're allowed to destroy it. Taisa says, kashal anius. But the point that we see from the pastor of the Gemara, and that's where Taisa learns, that pouring water on bread is okay, there's no issa, but pouring water on bread is kashal anis. That's frightening. Because we always thought that kashal anis is if you step on breadcrumbs. Tois is learning pouring water on breadcrumbs is kashal anis. And that's talking to the Mechaba Paskins. Kuf pei siv dalid. You're allowed to be ma'abid breadcrumbs, but it's kashal anis. Kum tzigen the Magen Avram on this Mechaba, and he says it's not true. Because base Hillel, used to take do just that, they would wash my mechreinim onto the floor which had breadcrumbs. Beis Hillel was not worried about anius. So he says, must be the only problem of kosher anius is stepping on bread. And he brings a raya, because the Gemara says they used to take the breadcrumbs and throw it into the river, into the ocean. Ah, yedima abedit. Must be, and he says with great confidence, Cain nearly borrow, he's arguing on Toysvis, that the only issa of, uh, issa, the only concern of Aeneas is when you are stepping on it. Pouring Mayim onto it, which makes it inedible, is not a problem. Not out Ibud, and not out Aeneas. <laughs> this is the Shita of the Magen Avram. Now, a Kazayis of bread, Avad, you can't be Ma'abed. Comes again the Chacham Tzvi, it's in the, in the Naisafai Simen Tezvav, and he says that the Magad Ram is not right. Tais is right. Because the Raya from the throwing in the ocean is not a Raya. Because that's not really a Bezoyan. First of all, it might resurface the other side, like the Gemara, famous Gemara, Bezach Tatainis. But besides that, he says, it's not a Bezoyan. Pouring Mayim Achrayinim, Ruach Ra, onto breadcrumbs is being Mamayasit. That's Taka worse. And Rav Ozna, in Chelek Aleph, Reishay, Taka has the same Yisoyed. Pouring Mayim Rechoinim onto breadcrumbs with all its Ruach Ra is tantamount to stepping on it. So that defends Toysis, but for us it's a problem. That means it's Lav Dafka stepping on breadcrumbs. That's Kashal Aniyus. Lamaisa, all agree, a Bezoyin for bread is us. And here's the problem. The Chayra, some people take breadcrumbs, especially on a Shabbos Suda, after they cut on the bread, on the taka, on the bread tray, the tray. What do you do with all the breadcrumbs? So we'll soon see there's an Indian to eat those breadcrumbs on Shabbos, especially, but let's say a person doesn't want them. So some people throw it into the base Kise. I'm not so sure that's the right thing to do. Because there are Chayim HaKadosh in a Sefer, Rish Letzi, on an hour Gemara, in Baruch Hashanah Beis, he said they were very makbid on stepping on bread, in other words, the Archaim HaKadosh is assuming for Dava Pashid that the, 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 the concept of Kosh is Lav Dafka stepping on it. 
It's taking bread, even though it's only breadcrumbs, and putting it in a makai meals, which ter- was a terrible bazillion. Now, L'chaira, the way he says garbage can is a, is a makai meals, calls can a beis so we have to really pause a moment. So is it taka so posh to throw it into the base like he's saying? No. Maybe into the sink. So that we have uh, what we said earlier, like putting it in an ocean. But throwing it into the base like is a problem. And in a garbage can, I mean that's the lotion of the archaim, his lotion is a to 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 Zarkla Ashba, especially if there are dirty diapers and cholin bones and it's it's really not a very honorable place to be. It might be a bazillion. And taka, Yisrael Kedosh, and people take breadcrumb, they put it in a bag, throw it in the garbage. Rather, some people have a minig that they take the breadcrumbs, feed it to birds. Now, I must add, it's interesting, because from Tainis, Dav Chafam at Beis, the Gemara says, you're not allowed to take food that's edible and feed animals. And that's the Rashi says, the Issa of Bezoyin Oichel. Because you're demoting human food to animal food. But obviously, in this case, that wouldn't apply. Because you're not going to eat the crumbs anyhow. Better be mekayim v'racham of al komaisav and feed the birds than throw it out. And Taka the Chayodim points this out. In Mem Hey Hey, he says, "Don't step on crumbs. Better feed it to the oifos." Now, what is a problem? The cool alma. People take bread challah, and when they go tashla, they throw they throw the bread to the to the fish, or they go to the zoo and they feed the the the, the animals all the meichel adam. That is a mechab and shulchan aruch. That's taka b'zoyin oichel. But the point is, what all agree, stepping on breadcrumbs is a problem. The ben ishchai in shana beis, pinchas yud yud beis. He writes, those that sell bread have to be careful. Don't step on the bread. And those that have bread in the house and be careful with the children. So stepping on bread is two gemaris and a mechab and shulchan aruch is kasha lanius. I just saw the Chaim Falaji in Kaf Chaim Chav Dal Memches. He has a bunch of azharais with breadcrumbs. He says, "Be careful, Ad Ma'oid. Number one, don't step on breadcrumbs because it's anias, and tell the maid to be careful with the breadcrumbs. And when you eat bread or matzah, certainly put it on a plate so it shouldn't splatter all over the floor. Then you end up stepping on the breadcrumbs. And he says, even to the K, to that extent." Be careful the cat doesn't take the bread because the cat crumbles it, runs all over the house, and, and puts bread comes all over the house. He's not talking about chametz. He's talking about it ends up being stepped on, and that's kosher anius. Now, of course, like every other good thing, too much obsessiveness is no good. You know, people get OCD with breadcrumbs. It's also a, you know, a makam of, of michshel. So a person has to be you know, normal and just basically eat carefully, eat over a plate, and then you dispose of the crumbs as you feel appropriate. But the ikka is to, you know, avoid that problem. One point I want to mention, if you learn the Gemara with Oshuch Aruch, the is is always on the one that's throwing the crumbs on the floor. We don't find the Feirish stepping on the crumbs, but obviously it's Kalvachayim. Maduch, the throwing breadcrumbs on the floor, is a problem because you're causing someone else to step on it. So definitely to step on it, would be the Issa of Kosher Landius. Moving on to Hilcha Shabbos. So, as I mentioned earlier, there are some that are very medactic to collect all the challah crumbs and eat them. So, in the Kava Yosha, under the Helik Swam Kava Yosha, in Perik Aleph, he says, Devarim Nefloim Kedarkai, and then he throws in, a person should not throw away the Puriyah Pas, Kolshke and Puriyah Shalamoitzi, Shiesh Bem Kedushas Eivori Ha'oilam. It's like, just like the, a part of the Kabbalah, like if Ramshan is who has a Kedusha, he says the Chalakram, especially on Shabbos, have a special Kedusha. The Kitzish law, and he has a, in, in, in the new print, it's an Ois Yud Ches, he has a whole bunch of Tikkunim for the Chet HaYidua, and Ois Yud Ches, he adds, Lechol Mishiyurei HaMoitzi. It's a, it's a Tikkun for that Chet. And the Chsam Soif is quoted as saying that a person eats challah crumbs is moyal lezikaring. It helps remember the Gemara. That, of course, together with Chazara, Chazara is always uh, number one, but that's a moyal lezikaring. But what's interesting, you, when you, want, you want to give a share about crumbs, you have to mention what's probably the Makar of Shirayim, the Yushalmi in Sanhedrin Ches Beis, Rabbi Yochanan, the next morning after the Makadish, the Chaydesh, 
So your Kaidua, they made a big Suda as a celebration. He would go, the Heliga Biochanam, he would go and collect the crumbs and eat them. And he said, Yechelki Iman de Kaddish Yarcha. And Pneumayish explains he wanted to show the Cheshivas of the Suda, so he even ate the breadcrumbs. Obviously, in breadcrumbs, there is a Kedusha, a Suda's Mitzvah, like the Kiddush L'Chaydesh. Rabbi Yochanan, the Heliga Yochanan, felt it appropriate enough to collect the crumbs that someone else left that wasn't his, and he ate it. Another question, until today we wouldn't consider much of a question, but now we see it's a serious question. Breadcrumbs that you are not planning on eating at all, and you're not feeding to birds, you're going to throw it in the garbage or throw it in a way that's appropriate. <coughs> Is it in fact muktza or not? So until today, muktza, what's the shayla? Now we see it's a beferish mishnah. Because if you learn the mishnah and the shulchan aruch, discussing breadcrumbs, the reason why it's not muktza like bones and shells is because it's oimid lachilas behema. Now, so that was always the case. People that were very poor, everything was used. If they didn't eat it, they fed the animals. People lived in a farm with animals. But in Tavshin Pei Gimel, no one's feeding his crumbs to animals. So the Hayantik and Paiskim discuss maybe breadcrumbs, taka, should be muktza. But it doesn't really sound right. And the Tisvar really is poshit. Because really the klal in Hilchus Muktza is when something is, is not muktza, and Eichel especially, it only becomes muktza when it's totally functionless. If you could use it in any which way, it retains its status as a non muktza So really, breadcrumbs, challah crumbs, are part of a challah. If a person wants to eat it, he makes a moitzi. So why should it be muktza So the terrorist, I saw this, and it's a good one to swear on the Sefer Nachas, Yisrael's page, Reish Tezvav, that the, the Mishnah and the Shalach were talking when they didn't eat it themselves and they only gave it to animals. So then, if it's mutter because of animals. But today that we either use it or we feed, or so it's a possibility we'll use it, as long as it's not yet nimas, why should it be mukta? And especially if you don't clean with your hand, you use a napkin. Don't forget, we have another svar that will be tilto minatzad. You're not touching it, be a dayim. Litzarech dava mutter to clean the table. So the mice were comfortable to say that breadcrumbs are not muktza. The Chotashani on Gimel Kuf Chav Gimel says, especially our Yisoy that we said earlier, if there's a chance you might use it, so it really you make a moitzi on it, so it's not ois oichel. The next question, also a Pesach issue, maybe more so, because the Metzi is more on Pesach, a person is walking B'Shus HaRabim, when there's no Erev, and he notices that there's breadcrumbs in his mouth, matzah crumbs, the question is Haitzah. So the truth is the same child is a person, uh, not, not pace, obviously, before pace, he puts a bilkel in his pocket, takes it out, but then it's crumbs in his pocket. So here the question is, you have to be consistent. If you're going to tell me that bread crumbs are not mukt, so it's roi lachila, so you're carrying something of value in your pocket, in your mouth, and taka, there were the anshe ma'isa, and mechashabes, and kunches achren, quotes anshe, Maisa, if you've cut your out, that is, that taka were careful, they cleaned their pockets very well before they went out, which is to rob them, and they cleaned their mouths of any food residue. The Menchaz Yitzchak discusses it, grad, he was asked to Shaila by the Alta Sklana Rebbe, uh, he was worried about crumbs in your mouth, is there a problem of it? So, now, the Mais is only a Chatsi Shir, and, uh, but it's still an Issa, could be an Issenia. So he's not so convinced it's so posh it. He says the belt is mekel, and the, and the truth is the mincha Shabbos is mekel. First of all, most place only a Carmelis. Plus, there's only a Chatzishir. And Kalach Hayad, and there may be Purim, not so choshev. Lemaisa, the belt goes out without worrying. And this, one of the svaras I saw is based on a Machaba, which is based on a Gemara. And that is when a person, when it's raining, so presumably there's accumulation of rain on either his clothing, on his hat, or whatever it is, why is that also to go on Shabbos? So it's not a Mabakach, the, the Machaba and the Gemara speak about it. And the Gemara and the Machaba explains, since it's Efsha, it's bottle. Chazal din Asa, something that's Efsha. No, the Maisa person eats Chala, Matzah, especially Matzah. It's very hard to make sure every last crumb is out. You have to collect your pockets and maybe there's a little dirt, there's a little this. So I did see the Paiskim compare that, the, the Oznidbu and Gimel Mem, Mem Gimel, Besides the fact, especially in your mouth, especially after decomposed. 
So again, I do. Uh, I am aware that it's brought Shem Sadikim to be marked with to clean out the pockets well. But when you're holding that madrega and shemais, it's fine. But leis ata, it's okay. It's many of the svaris. It's Efsha and melabatli, and the fact that it's not going to be used, it's considered not on the halachic map. <clears throat> the big question, which is really the nyana diyama for today, is cleaning crumbs, whether it's on the floor or in svarim, etc., etc. So the emphasis is that we saw three gemaras, brachas. <clears throat> and Psachim and Sech the Shabbos <clears throat> basically we saw most, most importantly for us Psachim Vavam at Beis Perurim Loi Chashivi or to quote the Magan Avram Chayodam Chavetz Chaim's Lashin Perurim Emei Labathi so why are we so busy cleaning but even more than that listen to this the Rosh in the Tshuv is Chav Dalet Aleph discusses what we had a few years ago, Er Pesach Shechal B'Shabbat. Let me remind you of that, you know, harrowing experience. It was a few minutes before this man, Shabbos, no goita, no vacuum cleaner, and you have to have three sudas, two at least, of pas. Now what do you do? So people ate on the porch, hanging out the window, you know, to get rid of those crumbs. So the, somebody asked the rush, can you eat a suda on the table and have a guy remove the, the crumbs and get rid of it? So you don't have to worry about the crumbs. So the Rosh says, and I quote, Lo yadana la mitzarach lo yitzi ha-mapa What do you have to worry about crumbs? Take the mapa, the tablecloth, shake it onto the floor, and then you'll have no problem. Now, again, Ere Pesach, Shechal B'Shavis. A few minutes before this man, if you do that in your house, you'll be sent to Siberia. Lo oilam ha-ilamim. Mom, this is the 11th hour. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing after this. Zok te beis yais, and simen tof mem dalid. Nira, what's the rush talking about? Pashit. Because what's left on the table? Only crumbs. Peru memela batli, especially on the floor. And therefore, there's no shear. Nidrasim beraglayim get stepped on. Mizbar mealeim. And why do you have to bother a guy? Don't call a guy. Do it yourself. Now, don't do that. But that's what it says in Machava. Tough mem dalit. Now, this is a shocking expression of Peru memela batli. However, before you apply that, before you quote me when you go home, there's another Gemara. And that's really in the, also in Psachim, and the Mechaba quotes it in Tov Membei Zayin. And that's the famous Sugya, Bodzeg Shebsitke Areva, which basically means there are little deposits of dough left on a pot. To make a very long story short, what's the Gea for us, the Magan Avram and the Taz, and Mishtabura and Sif Katna and Gimel quotes this, Lahalacha, that this little bits of dough is okay, but dafka when the roy lechok tzas. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That this is only when it's paches. It's only like some say when you have little pieces, but it's only zokte mishdebura little pieces. That's roy lechok tzas. Im hoyim a ton of tzas u paches mikedzayis ain't sarach levayo lekul alma. So we see two chedushim. That the first of all, Mishtabura passed like the Magen Ramantaz, that if those little pieces are still royal achila, we have a problem. The only heta is if it's so badly decomposed or uh, decomposed that it's maton of kitsas. But Mishtabura is nighted to say if it's still edible, then even a small amount is a problem. So here the question is how do the two Mishtaburas stim? By the case that we said of, of Ere Pesach, he said, just throw it on the floor, no problem. And regarding the Batsek, Sitka Reva, he's Taka Machma, the only hat is if it's Maton of Kitsas. So the aside of this Sugya, Miguel Pesach, is very simple. He doesn't say crumbs don't count, period. Perurim Dakim, that on the Drosim, that gets stepped on, that is not a problem. Now let me explain. Really, this is klar l'chola days or l'chola shitas. Even though we say that basically there is an issa by every issa, we know they have to have bias. When it comes to Pesach, this Pesach is the mashu. All agree. Now, Abbe Bal Yeroba Matza, most people, oh, there's no chatzishir, only kezayis or nothing. Some are machma, fine. 
But everybody agrees that that a, a little bit, even a kolshu of matzah is also of Muhammad is also minatoira. So here's the, the point regarding is daika. Like in the Sugi and the Gemara. First, why do you have to do mavatalit? You already checked. of crumbs is not the problem because crumbs don't count but if there's a that's the enemy and once you want to eat it we said actually you have to make a brach on it in fact that's why we clean for crumbs and he has a beautiful riot to this side what are you going to find the we're not going to find the bilkula you're gonna find crumbs. I frag the chayodim on himself. Peruma meila batli. So frag the chayodim. What are we cleaning before Pesach? Zok there. That's only when there's no chishash. You might come to eat it. If it's missing, you can't find it. But if there's a crumb that you might come to eat it, so it's not the existence of crumbs is bal yira. It's shemayavi la oichloi. And the plea is the Chavetz Chaim wrote a, one of many of his Svarim wrote a say for Machni Yisrael for soldiers fighting on the front lines. And in Perek Yud Simon Hay he quotes this lashon of the Chayadim verbatim, talking to soldiers. You know, try to find the kula too, but there's no kula. Crumbs that you might come to eat is unacceptable. And the Chazanish says the same. You saw it in Kuf Tezai and Yud Ches that Purim Taka Loi Chashivi. But when it comes to a Chashash, you might come to eat it. Not only you have to get rid of it, you have to put up a mechitza if not. Because the, the, if there's a chashash, you might come to eat it. Perurim are lied the very chashif. Because even on a kol shu, there's an isidaraisa of chametz bepesach. And I should mention, the yisoyed is one of the rishonim. And look this up, you can see. The rekeach at simen reish samach vav. He says, when, before you make the bedikas chametz, you make a bracha. Oival asiyasam. V'choylech. Lechapes pirurim, he writes. The, the ikabadik is for crumbs. The charmas dokim is for crumbs. So you have two rayas. You have the chayodim's ray and the, and, and the, the rekeach. But let me be very clear. Pirurim taka bottle. If the yinach no chashashi come to eat it, it's bottle. You don't have to make it a bittle. But if the prab, if there is a chashashi meyavil oichloi, that we have to get rid of. Oh. So now let's go back to our sugi and see how beautiful it is. The truth is, there's no chashash, a person can sit down to lunch on uh, Pesach, eat a crumb. But if it happens, uh, it's a problem, so we have to worry about that. Crumbs on the floor, even though they're not totally nifs machilas kelev, metun of ksas, there's no chashash, you can come to eat it. You're not picking up crumbs from the floor and eating it, that's metun of ksas. If you have that's on the table, Theoretically, it's bottle, but you have to get rid of it. But when it's on the floor, so then the Mishnah Taka says, "Matunav ktsas enough. You're not going to bend down to eat that crumb. That doesn't count, and that Taka you could ignore. So both are true. We we check and we clean for crumbs that you might come to eat, but the crumbs on the floor are mamela batli. Now, of course, it's posh, I'll mention anyhow. If you have a bilkel on the floor, there's no heta, until it's nifsa machilas kelev, which is a very rare. But crumbs is a tartal reyusa. Number one, memela batli. It's a small amount. And number two, it's maton of ktsas. And reyza apella. This very lotion that I, that I told you, tartal reyusa, is the ereim. The ereim, one of the rishayim, one of the baliatoises. In Simon Shin Aleph, he says, "Imu paches mikizayis umetun of ketsas, kivan de iketat l'reyusam ein oichayiv levar." And the, another reason that that's a proof to what we said is the rush. The rush says, "Ere Pesach, right before this man, shake out the crumbs." Now, no one stepped in it yet. What's the heta? So vice to chais, once it's on the floor, it's already maton of ketas. We don't need it off the floor. So if you have a bilkula on the floor, you must get rid of it. You can't throw it on the floor. But crumbs that are maton of ketas and on the floor is enough a maton of ketas, 
you have that tatl reyusam, and that, theoretically, that's the way the Rosh says, I don't think people do it, but that's what Mechaba says, that's enough to get rid of the problem of those crumbs. And Taka Ravazna, very beautifully in Chelek Yud Aleph, Simen Kuf Yudalit, highlights this point, that crumbs in themselves, you don't need a bitl. It's only concerned Shem Yavu Oh, so once you're comfortable with Nochesha Shem Yavu Le'oichlai, you could even ignore those crumbs. Oh. So now let's apply this Mola Maisa and let's discuss the question of crumbs in Svarim. So the Maisa, this is Pashtis, why the Chazenish, actually I should start first with the, the Maisa Rav, the Goyin and Maisa Rav that's recorded, that he would check the Svarim, this is Sim Kofayin Ches, he would check the Svarim that he would bring to the table on Pesach. Which definitely gives us a feeling that you have to check Svarim. The Chazenish in Kuf Tezai and Yud Ches, he says, There's no difference how much, and therefore you have to either clean the Svarim or put up a Mechitza, and like some people do, close up the Svarim for Pesach. And Takin, the Arches Rabbeinu, Chelik Beis, Amid Vav, they described the Chazanish, actually he didn't do it, but his Tamidim did it, and they spent many days going through each page of the Sefer, running their finger over the binding, make sure no crumbs remained. And that was the meaning of the stipler. However, as we know, many are not Niz, especially today we have so many Svarim, it would take years to, collect, to, to, to clean Svarim. And one Cheshvin, I saw Rabbi Yisrael Yanka Fisher, and Evan Yisrael, Tesla, Amit Ches, he says, maybe Taka the crumbs in Svarim is already a ton of Ketas. He writes in Milben, especially in the Yisrael, there's like worms that are in, 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 in Svarim. So it's, we're back to the same heta of crumbs, Mamei Labatli. And if you look at the Rav, in Kuntras Ach, on top of Amei Yud Ches, he mamish spells it out, that really crumbs don't count. And once it's somewhat nimas, it's fine. So really we have these Rishayinim and these Paiskim, that once you could say the crumbs, you will not come to eat it, then what's the problem? Now, will a person, you know, sit down, Pesach, open a safe, and take out the crumb? It's, he doesn't know if it's milachiks, and fleishiks, or yashin, or chadash, or, you know. See, months ago it came from. So, it's something that you have to really, there's a real chadash, and you have a loichle. Plus, and I must say, there's a big plus, who said there's bachal crumbs in the safe? You know, there's a, every person to eat with every safe. Maybe the crumbs, they were mechai vadika. Now, why do you check in your house? Because in a house, someplace there are crumbs. That I saw another safer, the, the Madonna Yom, maybe only there's no chiyah to check crumbs. A very thorough tshuva, Yabi Yo'oy Mechel, Gzayim, Em Gimel, and also the Orlitzi and Aleph, Lamed Beis, they both say that Chazini, that was his grace, the Kedusha, and his Chumrah, but Mi Ikkad Din, there's no chiyah actually to check Svarim for Chomets. Now, especially if a person is careful not to when he when he learns or whatever, he not uses svarim. Then, in fact, it says when the leader is safe, he buys svarim. Then it's safe, but there's a chashash of crumbs. The people are not. Is there a problem with the oichel? But the and Aleph Kuf. The Allah, you don't have to check Svar. Even if it's Nimas Ksas, that's an Issa Deraisa. Because again, the Issa, the, the Issa Chila is only, is also till it's Nifsal Miachilas Kelev. And Svarim crumbs are not. So we're only talking about someone that's, you know, going with caution. Or only you never use with, with Chametz. So basically, you have to be careful. that people use on, on the whole year with, with crumbs. So that we can't clean properly, so people try to clean it properly. We don't, we don't like selling chametz gomer. And the rest of it, basically, we put it with, together to sell it with the chametz, and hopefully that would be enough. 
The point is that you have to keep, there are two issues that have to be dealt with individually. Eating even chalil, a crumb of, of, of chametz until it's nifsa machilas. But shash, having a crumb, But if you are guaranteed that there's no chishash of the oichla, we're back to the rush and and another pay scheme that that's not a problem. Two I wanted to mention, we had a few years ago er pesach shechal b'shabbat. Remember, it was a problem. I mean, it was a challenge, not a problem. Chasham, you just not a problem. Problem to challenge. You have to eat challah, and you don't know how much to have. So quickly, a few minutes for this man, any leftover challah, you crumbled it and threw it into the basic kisi and flushed it. Now, we did it then, we had no problems. Now, we have two problems in retrospect. You're taking a, a, a kezayis of, of chala, that's ibud, pas, baltashchis. Putting the beis hakisei is also kashlanius. But the maisa can't be, because chazal say that's what you have to do after the, the leftover from the suda. The teret has to be, and that's poshit, that if now the midst of the hour is to either burn the chametz, no baltashchis, but Pesach, Shabbos, you can't burn it. You have to get rid of it. So that's the mitzvah. A mitzvah is not bizoyin, is not ibud, and not kosher laniyas. A mitzvah brings Allah brachis. And last but not least, I want to mention this because someone told me something which his mom is wrong. I don't know where he got it from. But crumbs, commercial breadcrumbs. So he said that that's avada not a moitzi for sure because it's not breadcrumbs. They make it from scratch. So I, I called the head of the and he gave me the information that's absolutely not true. The Mitzvah is that there are three ways, interesting, so gay also to your day, so I'm mentioning it now. There are three ways to make breadcrumbs. None of them is you make it from scratch. It's not, you know, you people make a svar because, you know, I'll be, you know, I'll be seichel, but you can't make a Mitzvah out of seichel. No one makes breadcrumbs from scratch. Either they eventually all bread, and they, of course, they dry it, and they crush it. That's the old-fashioned way, which is still done today. Some companies make a thick bread, which is not really bread, and then again they dry it and they crush it into crumbs. But today, the mo one of the most popular ways is called panko breadcrumbs. If you ever notice, it's panko on it. What does panko mean? So I'm not kidding. They electrocute a dough of bread. They don't bake it, they don't cook it, they electrocute it. I said, really? Yeah, yeah. They send it a tremendous amount, a bolt of electricity that actually doesn't cook it or bake it, but it makes it enough edible to eat. They got this from World War II. The soldiers had to eat and they had no ovens. By putting an intense amount of electricity, it somehow makes it royal achila. It's a certain sense in the science of it, similar to the microwave. Microwave doesn't really bake or cook it. It sort of, uh, uh, you know, appeals to the molecules. But basically, it's literally, panko is electrocuted bread. And again, that's accurate. Lamaisa, lamaisa, the first type of bread that comes from old bread, the Vada Moitz Lechem and Oretz. And if the bread was, uh, was, was past palta, so the bread comes as past palta. So, you know, you have to keep that in mind. If it's made from the thick bread, so it could be that was never a Moitzi. And now that it's bread crumbs, it's, it's, like, it's like crumbled, uh, not a Moitzi. Because if you hold that a, a thick bread that's not used as bread doesn't have the status of bread, so maybe bread comes to be mezainous. But the panko electrocuted bread, electrocuted bread crumbs is like an interesting thing. You have to think about that. But one thing I will say, if someone has regular bread crumbs, even if it's flavored, but it was made from bread, it's a moitzi lechem in aretz. But, and also, again, be careful, make sure that it's past Yisrael, meet chilosa. But certainly, when we use bread crumbs in ingredients, so then either it's cooked or baked. Now, then we have the Allah and Shulchan Aruch. A less than a gazayis, that's not nikat surasai, that's cooked or baked. So the bracha is definitely not a moitzi, it'll be mamzainis, a good nyam tif to you all. Shame, you can share Talak, you can be a shakar, or a smith for today's shir. After Kaddish, Shur Smith will uh, say Sikum of the Shir for a few minutes. And I'm going to call Shem Ratz Gersh Bogel Azakis, this is Shur the Figure Hibbon of Tere Mitzvah Shanema, and I'm going to call Shem Ratz Gersh Bogel Azakis.
Amém. Big pieces, what's this where? Yeah. Uh, a crouton, a crouton is a barrier. Of course you're listening out to the concrete sky. Yeah, I can Kenzine, Kenzine. This floor you would eat off the floor? <laughs> okay. Three second rule. No, but you say, okay. The Peru may be bottled, but the shoe is not bottled, so we're gonna cast it with a secum. Okay. Yeah, 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 it's good, good, good. I just, uh, just like Chaz, we learned today, crumbs that are not oimed lachila, the status, they are demoted. It's like sort of a suffix. Basically, crumbs that are not oimed lachila, we could assume is no longer an oichel, that the lavush is lost, the stipe explained, a loss of shem oichel, but there's still an isse bezayin, evidently, because it's still. The ma'isa came from bread, and that's kashal anias. And the chavada, the chinuch's words, we have to live with, that we have to cherish everything of the Bernisham's world, even a gargush al chardal, even though it's not an oichel, but lalocha, ibud, oichel, pachas mishavapruta, pachas mikazais, is mutik is not an oichel, that's the lamdas. A bread crumb that a person eats, he makes a moitzi, because the man now it's still a food. Breadcrumbs in liver, chveis, and exhale, whatever, that's taka bottle. But a breadcrumb that a person eats, lo yitzu, would be a regular moitzi lechem in aretz. The breadcrumbs in the one's mouth that he swallows, almost because he's no other choice, that doesn't need a new bracha, because that was concluded in the first bracha or its bottle. As a hearers, we have to have, when we throw peklach, not to throw any food that comes to the bezoyin, even, as we said, because that's a bezoyin, oichel, and it should be taka, kept in a package that keeps it together. If you have crumbs that add up to a kezayis, it's mechleik, it's a paiskim, a most of machmir, that there is an issa of ibar oichel, besides, of course, kashal anias. A person, try, when you make a mezayinist, try to swallow all crumbs before you make a shakal on the drink, but if there's little crumbs left over, memei labatli, zochsar no malapiti lasecha. Leaving, we, we, leaving bread on the table, I should mention, is an important Indian, say Allah and say Pasha, it's practical, but if there's no aniyam that they're there, you're allowed to leave just breadcrumbs and throw out the breadcrumbs afterwards. A practical idea would be a piece of matzah on the table and a camp of yeshiva, zikhan of crumbs, and after you finish, throw out the crumbs. If pouring water onto breadcrumbs is kashal aniyas, is it only stepping on it or any way of ruining it? But we do did see a real bazaar in Lachar Beis Akise for sure, and maybe even a garbage that's very unpleasant. It would also be a problem of kashalanias. So dispose of the crumbs either in a sink or in a bag and then in the garbage, something to show more of a for pas. Feeding the birds the crumbs is an option. There's no chashash muktza on breadcrumbs, even if you have no animals, no chashash of a on the small crumbs. Pesach, the crumbs are bottled. Unless there's a chashash achil, and Ataka Yid pointed out, I want to thank him, that when you have children or grandchildren running around the house, so there's a chashash yavalo achle, maybe even on the crumbs if they eat it, because they're not supposed to, but if they eat it, so make sure you clean it properly. The ton of ktsas on the floor in itself is not a problem, but again, if there are children that might eat it, it should be cleaned. Avada to eat a crumb until it's nifz mechilas kelev is an isa deraisa, but the bedike is for the crumbs of shema yovel I forgot to mention, the minig are putting on 10 pieces of bread, the paiskim advise put each piece less than a kezayis, because if you lose it, at least you're certain there's no bal yirah, bal That's the good news. 
but how do you burn it and make a bracha when you when, when you when in, on, on that burning? Because the kazais, the less the kazais, them add up. So it's kedai to use small pieces and a kazai is all together. Some clean swarm, many don't, but the ik is not chalil should come to chashash that it falls into the food. Some are look, Rabbi, the things that there is more crumbs like ben shalach have had to put away with the chametz. Don't uh, try to clean it. Er pesach shechal b'shab. So anytime you have to get rid of cr uh, crumbs the last minute and you have no other choice, you're allowed to be ma'abed because that's the mitzvah to be ma'abed it. And last but not least, breadcrumbs, check the bracha and check if it's pas Yisrael because it's really originally from a bread uh, original. <laughs> I'm not doing it. 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 I'm not